let's start with an easy question. Let's calculate the moment in the direction of the moment over here, right? So just by looking at it, we can tell that this lever will turn clockwise if we're looking at it, how we're looking at it, right? Well, this could be a door, and that's what I'm trying to say. But it's going to turn clockwise according to the picture, so, right? So the moment M, capital M, being generated will be clockwise. So I'll just put an arrow on it just for my familiarity over here. And the equation for this is F times T, which is F uh, is equal to F is equal to 4 newtons times 3 distance and we get 12 newton meter. Of course the uh, units for this is going to be newton and meter multiply so that's just newton meter. That's the moment being generated and of course it is clockwise. easy now we're looking at a seesaw over here we see that there is a pivot and this bar is hanging on it this bar is for our understanding completely weightless and there are two masses on it each generating their own moment right now let's call them moment we have a moment one and moment two now you need to understand that moment one you need to uh, not understand i think it's obvious but appreciate that moment one was going to be counterclockwise and moment two is going to be uh, clockwise so they're negating or they're countering each other right so what's the sum of these moments so the net moment the net moment or the total moment and ET is equal to moment one. So depending on how you want to see it, let's let's take this one clockwise as positive, right? So this should be equal to minus moment one because we're taking moment, we know moment one is counterclockwise. We're gonna put a minus sign, I hope that makes sense. But moment two is in the same direction, right? So that's gonna be positive moment two right essentially we understand that this moment once we calculate it is going to counteract our net moment it's going to be against it so we put a negative si sign there to account for that or in a different way we could just calculate it separately and just understood that one's counterclockwise one's clockwise so in summary if they're clockwise they're the same you know uh positivity or negative if and they should be opposite if it's uh, if they're countering, right? So with that in mind, what's responsible for moment one? We said our box over here is moment one. So that's a force of 10 Newton, a distance two meters away, right? So let's put that in our equation. Moment one is negative. Negative force is 10 multiplied by the distance, which is two. Again, force is 10, this is distance is 2, plus moment 2, which is a force of 5 newtons, a distance twice away, right? We're essentially figuring out which way the seesaw is going to turn or not turn. So the net uh, plus, uh, what is it, 5 times 4, right? And I think where I realize where this is going, that's minus 20 Newton meter. And then we have plus 20 Newton meter. The net moment on the object is zero. So this seesaw is balanced or in equilibrium completely by equilibrium right either you can say it's balance you can say it's equilibrium equilibrium is 
a more uh, popular word than just saying it's balanced, right? So the seesaw is completely balanced and you notice how the lighter weight being further away generates the same moment as a heavier weight but closer. So distance also uh, causes the turning effect and this obviously is counteracting our clockwise motion, this is with our clockwise motion, but there's no motion because they're both equal and we found that out. In another way we could have also, if the question was prove that this was this uh, seesaw is balanced, we could have gone our m1 is equal to m2 and sign wise that makes sense because they're on the opposite side of the equal sign and we could have done it, right? But pretty easy so far, right? Now we're dealing with three forces and we realize that it's more or less the same, uh, the process at least, <coughs> we'll call our moment, we shall Christian our moment, M1, M2, and M3, and we realize this is counterclockwise, clockwise, clockwise. So the total moment, let's just call it M, I can't write net the bottom every time, right? So it's M, which is equal to M1, which is minus, right? Minus M1, because it's counterclockwise. I've set my frame of reference as clockwise being positive, because why not? I could have do it, done it the other way. And we have M2, which is clockwise. Let's highlight that counterclockwise. That's why it's negative, plus M3 clockwise. And you won't really need to do this uh, once you get familiar with it, because uh, it'll start making so obvious, it'll be so obvious, you won't get confused. But when you're starting off, just try using these as much as you can so you build your confidence, right? M1, let's do that in pink, is 10 and two. It's a force of 10 Newtons, two away. So that's neg, oops, that's negative. 10 times two. Then in yellow, we have M2, which is eight Newtons, but one away. So that's pretty easy. That's eight plus minus one away. And then we have in red M3, which is three Newton force, but a distance of four meters away. Four meters away. Right, and now we can calculate it. it. 10 times two is negative 20 plus eight uh, plus 12. And this again is balanced or in equilibrium, equilibrium, right? And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Let us take the same question and say the force, we I took on the forces, but we have three sources of forces. Let's say this is, this is 10 Newton force. This is also 10 Newton force. And we have to find the force F that will result in the net moment of this seesaw being zero, like how much force do I need to put in over here so that the net moment is zero. So I could do it the older way where net moment is zero and just plug it in, but that's slightly like 2% more complicated so I won't do that. Here's another way of doing it. I realize I have three moments again and I'll name them. I have M1, I'll have M2, and I have M3, right? And this is your uh, counterclockwise, this is clockwise, this is clockwise. Again, we're trying to figure out how much force or how much uh, weight do I put in here to balance the seesaw, right? Or this um, contraption, right? Um, so we realize that this is generating a clockwise moment only and these two together are generating, oh sorry, the, this is generating a counterclockwise moment 
whereas these two are generating a clockwise moment combined. So safe for me to say, I'll say M1 is equal to M2, M3, right? Because all the counterclockwise moments should equal, let's also write that down, all counterclockwise moments should be equal to all clockwise moments. And that's what I'm doing. For it to be balanced, the clockwise and counterclockwise need to be balanced. It makes sense, right? So M1 is, we know, we know it, we love it, is 10 newtons, two meters away. 10 newtons, two meters away. That's 10 times two. M2 is 10, also 10, but one meter away. So that's just 10 times one plus M3, which we don't know the force, we're trying to calculate it, but it's four meters away. So that's F for our unknown force times four. And I'll put brackets here so it's easier to kind of group them together, right? So that's 20 equals to 10 plus four F. And that's four F equals to 10, because 20 minus 10, I just flip the size, and F now equals to 2.5 newtons. If I put a mass weighing 2.5 newtons over here, the entire system will be in equilibrium and I can balance it like that. Now, so far we've neglected the weight of the bar itself. And you'll kind of understand, I think, I'll leave you to understand why we're ignoring it for so long. Um, but in this particular case, we can't really ignore it. And they're specifically telling us that a diver of weight 500 newton stands at the end of a springboard that's two meters long and fixed at point P. So the pivot is over here, he's gener generating a force over here. However, the springboard has a weight of 500 newtons as well. So there are two forces acting on it. So any body's weight acts or is approximated to act on its center of mass. The center of mass of this board will be exactly at the one meter mark. So over here, there's a force of 500 newton, 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 newton acting on it. And there's a guy over here at two meters away, which is also creating a downward force. So there's moment again, there's moment one, there is moment two, right? And uh, the center of mass of the springboard is the center of the board. So right here, right? Well, they're already helping us with that. And I'm just confirming the weight is 500 for this and 500 for this. Okay, let's calculate the total moment about this point P or this pivot. So the total moment is going to be M, which is equal to M1 plus M2. And I say that because I realize both are clockwise moments. So I'm just adding them together, right? M1 is 500 times one, and M2 is 500 times two. So that should be simply the 500 times three, which is 1500 Newton meter. The pivot is experiencing a torque or a moment of 1500 Newton meter.